What if I told you that you've been playing Kenji wrong this entire time? This video features the best tips and tricks to help you play the Sushi Samurai Kenji. Alright, so to start off this guide, the first thing I do want to talk about is this trait that he has. Whenever Kenji deals damage to any enemy brawler or the enemy brawler spawnables with his attack, he regains health that is 35% of the damage dealt. Now, I really love this trait for Kenji because it's going to help him stay alive. Since Kenji is always going to be close to the enemy since his attacks are super short, he can benefit from the additional heals he gains from his main attack. There's nothing too special to discuss about this trait, you will always heal the same amount for your two different main attacks and your super. Unless of course you are running the damage gear, then you'll heal a little bit more. Okay, that's gonna be for Kenji's trait, let's go ahead and talk about his main attack, dash and slash. Kenji's attack sequence alternates between a dash and a slash. For his first sequence, Kenji dashes forward a short distance similar to Mortis, dealing moderate damage to any enemy brawlers in its path. For his second sequence, Kenji swings his katana, hitting enemies in a wide arc that deals moderate damage similar to BB. Now you can use Kenji's dash attack to move around the map faster. This can be used exactly like Mortis's dash. You can use the dash to dodge an incoming projectile that could save you a lot of health. You can even use the dash attack to try and get closer to the enemies. Dashing closer to the enemies and then using your swipe attack can be a great combination. What's also great about the dash attack is you can use it in Brawl Ball. You can kick the ball forward and then use your dashing main attack to catch up to the ball. It is harder to dribble with Kenji because not every attack is going to be a dash. The only way this is possible is by using his dashy dash gadget, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Now when playing Kenji and using his main attacks, try and attack grouped up enemies. Since Kenji can deal massive amounts of damage close up, you want to take advantage of his piercing attacks as much as possible. This will help you deal more damage efficiently, but also help you charge up your super much faster. Since Kenji is an assassin, he easily has the ability to team web enemies that are grouped up together. Now I would recommend targeting brawlers that have low health and deal terrible burst damage. As a brawler that needs to be close to enemies to deal damage, you clearly don't want to be rushing brawlers like Shelly or Clancy who can melt you instantly. Target snipers or throwers because there's no way they can deal enough damage per second to take you down in time. Now when using Kenji's main attacks, I would never recommend auto-aiming unless you're directly next to your target. There's been many times when I was first learning Kenji where I dashed the wrong way because I'm auto-aiming or I just wasn't paying attention to which attack was next. If you're still far away from your target, it's still better to manually aim as you don't want to dash in the wrong direction or dash to a wall. Now since Kenji has a pretty fast reload speed, you don't have to be conservative with his ammo. I love just using the dash to move around the map and cause pressure. Kenji has a very fast reload speed, so you don't have to be super wary of how much ammo you have left. Just make sure you have enough ammo when engaging in combat. Now, kind of like what it discussed in the other tip, you want to make sure you're keeping track of what your next attack is going to be. For example, if you need your dash attack to get closer to the enemies, make sure that attack is queued up next. However, if you're in a bush and you want your swipe attack to be next, make sure that your swipe attack is ready to go next. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Brent, how can I counter Kenji? He's so irritating in the face. Well, I recommend running brawlers like Cordelius, Clancy, and Otis. Now, what's something that all of these brawlers have in common? Well, they can either mute Kenji or deal huge amounts of damage close up. I can see these brawlers seeing a rise in play rate when Kenji is everywhere, mostly because these are great counters to him. Another way you can counter Kenji is to just not group up against him. You don't want to give Kenji easy opportunities to team wipe you and your team. But okay, that's gonna be first mean attack. Let's go to talk about Kenji Super Slashy Me. Kenji throws a fish over obstacles and when it lands, he quickly slashes twice across the spot where it landed in a cross pattern dealing high damage. Double damage is dealt if the enemy is hit by both slashes. When the super is over, he returns back to where he was before activating his super. Now when using Kenji's super, I recommend trying to hit multiple enemies if you can. Even though the most ideal situation is to hit targets at the origin of your super, being able to hit enemies that are caught anywhere in the X is a W in my book. 2600 damage is nothing to joke about, but dealing that 5200 damage at max level is obviously what you need to be aiming for. Now what's great about Kenji's super is you can use it to hit enemies that are hiding behind walls. Since you can aim your super over walls, it can be a great way to catch enemies that are trying to run away and heal up from you. I always thought of it as like a Bonnie super, but this is obviously way better. Now as far as auto-aiming Kenji's super goes, I recommend never auto-aiming a super unless you are directly next to somebody. Most of the time, if you're a good distance away from your target, auto-aiming your super will just cause you to miss completely. However, if you're literally dashing on top of somebody, auto-aiming your super will probably hit since, well, the enemy is right next to you. Now what's great about Kenji's super is you can use it as an escape tool when you're about to die. I love to use my super when I'm about to die and I can buy a little bit more time to fluster the enemy team. It's going to take time for people to learn how to play against Kenji, so if you can use your super to disappear for a second or two, it may save your life. 
Now, in order to counter Kenji's super, you need to really be watching where the fish lands. Now, I recommend running in either a horizontal or a vertical direction whenever you see Kenji's fish in the air. Since the super will be used in an X shape, Kenji will be slashing diagonally. So as long as you don't move diagonally, you should be good to go when dodging his super. Now, another way you can counter Kenji's super is to just camp out right where he used his super. If you can stand where Kenji was last seen before he used his super, you may be able to surprise him and totally melt him down if you are using the right brawler. Make sure you you have ammo, a gadget, super, whatever you need in order to burst him down ASAP. But okay, that's gonna be it for Kenji's super. Let's go to talk about his gadgets. But the first thing I want to talk about is Dashi Dash. Activating this gadget causes all of Kenji's attacks for the next three seconds to be his dash attack. Now you can obviously imagine this gadget being great in a game mode like Brawl Ball. Dashi Dash basically turns Kenji into Mortis. Use this gadget to self-pass and dribble when needing to score goals. It's good to have the same consistent attack for the next three seconds, and I'm pretty sure the Mortis means will be using this one for that juicy 0 and 10 gameplay. And what's also good about using this gadget outside side of Brawl Ball is when you need to travel faster across the map. This gadget can be great to get to wherever you need to go during the match. If you just respawn, it can be helpful to use the gadget to get back up the map to help out your teammates. Even just using the gadget to maintain pressure can relieve stress off of your teammates. Now another way you can use the Dashi Dash gadget is when you need to get closer to the enemies. Kind of like the previous tip, you can use the gadget to dash quickly up the map and close down the distance between you and your target. By dashing closer to them, you'll be able to get within range and deal more damage damage when the gadget duration is done. Now another way you can use the Dashi Dash gadget is to escape danger. Opposite of the previous tip, you can now use the gadget to run away from the enemies. If you are about to die, you can dash away like a mortis to dodge incoming projectiles or just quickly dash behind a wall for some safety. Now the one downside that I do see with this gadget is that you're going to be dealing less damage. If you are using this gadget to deal damage onto the enemies, you will actually be playing at a disadvantage. Since the slash attack does 500 more damage at max level compared to Kenji's dash attack, you are missing out on some key damage that could change certain interactions. But okay, that's gonna be it for his first gadget, let's gonna talk about his second gadget, Hosomaki Healing. Kenji instantly recovers health for 75% of the damage taken over the next 3 seconds. When the gadget is ready, a red bar on Kenji's health shows up how much health he will recover if he uses the gadget. Now let's be real here, this gadget is completely broken and you need to be using it over Dashi Dash. With Hosomaki healing, you can escape death so many times and win almost any 1v1 engagement. If you are dealing with enemies that can deal lots of damage close up, you can immediately use your gadget and gain all the health right back which is pretty disgusting. Now a mistake I see with a lot of amateur Kenji Kenji players is the way to use this gadget. If you take a huge hit of damage, it's better to just activate the gadget and heal right back up. If you wait too long because you want to heal more, the damage you took prior might have been longer than 3 seconds ago, thus resulting in less healing than you think. Now when using this gadget, I always recommend that you should be constantly looking at your health bar. Since your health bar can indicate how much you will heal when the gadget is ready, that should dictate when to use the gadget. If you can use it and gain back a huge part of your health, you might as well just use it so that you're back at a decent amount of health again. Now, in order to counter Kenji when using this gadget, just have him bait out all of the gadgets early on in the match. If you can get Kenji to waste all of his gadgets at the beginning to middle of the match, by the middle to end when the game could be going down to the wire, he won't have any gadgets to use to keep him alive. This will make it easier for you to take him down since he won't have any Mickey Mouse heals to save him. But okay, that's gonna be for his gadgets, let's go to talk about his star powers, but the first one I wanna talk about is Study the Blade. Kenji's Super Slice's range are increased by 30%. Now the main reason you're going to want to use this gadget is to obviously increase the range of your super slices. Since your slices will be even longer, it might help you catch more enemies that think they're not within range anymore. Now there's nothing really special that I can discuss about this star power since it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's be real here, this star power is not going to be better than his other star power, Nigiri Nemesis. After not taking damage for 5 seconds, Kenji gains a special shield that reduces the next enemy's projectiles by 90%. Now okay, out of everything that's a part of Kenji's kit, this is the most broken thing about him. With this star power, you can tank so many different things in the game and take no damage at all. By you tanking a high incoming attack from the enemy, this could save your teammates lives no doubt. By having this star power activated, this will allow you to play more freely since you have this massive shield to help you get closer to the enemies. Now when running this star power, you gotta take advantage of the massive shield to surprise your target. If you are hiding in a bush, the enemy isn't gonna see you, nor are they gonna be expecting to deal less than 100 damage to you with their first 
first attack. As people start to face more and more Kenjis, then players will start to adapt and expect it. So take advantage of this ASAP. Now, one of the ways to counter this star power is to run multi projectile brawlers. If you can play brawlers that can shoot multiple projectiles like Pam, Cold, or Ape It, it doesn't matter if Kenji has the shield and takes no damage on the first projectile, he's gonna need to focus on the rest of the projectiles that follow after that. Also, just make sure Kenji is constantly taking damage so that the star power's clock keeps on resetting and it never activates for him. Alright, so the recommended build I suggest you guys use for Kenji is gonna be using the Hosomaki healing gadget, the Nigiri Nemesis star power. The first gear I'm gonna recommend is gonna be the damage gear. Kenji can always benefit with dealing more damage since he is an assassin and he's probably gonna be lower in health more times than not. And the second gear I'm gonna recommend is gonna be the shield gear. With Kenji going aggressive all the time, he's gonna need the additional shield to help him stay alive and get those kills. Well, anyway guys, if you guys enjoyed that brawler guide, I highly recommend you just go check out this brawler guide right here.